Welcome to Usable Efficiency. This is a website dedicated to improving the way that you build websites and improving websites themselves. When we're dealing with image formats on the web, it's all about choosing the right tool for the job. And luckily, there are very few tools to choose from. Let's first off look at the three different image formats on the web. So we'll start off with GIF or GIF, depending where you are in the world. So the benefit of GIFs are that they give very crisp images with flat colours, so for instance logos or icon type imagery. And a benefit or advantage of the GIF is also that it supplies transparency, but as we will see um, it is very limited transparency. And the main downside to GIFs are that they are limited to 256 colours. Second image format we're going to look at is JPG or JPEG. The main advantage of JPEGs is that they allow a large amount of colours to be used, 16 million in total. Second advantage is that the images compress very well and into low file sizes. Unfortunately, there is no transparency with JPEGs and they do not convert well into flat colours. So for instance, for logos or icons, anything like that, you would have to save the file at a very high size to get a clear and crisp image. So what are the uses of JPEGs? The best use of JPEG is for photograph type imagery. The third format we are going to cover is PNG, which is sounded like ping. And this is the format we're going to be concentrating most on in this episode. So pings are very good for flat coloured imagery such as logos and icons. And the great thing about PNGs is that they support full transparency. Unfortunately with the full transparency they produce a large file size but we will look at some ways to reduce the file sizes in this episode. The main uses of pings are for logos and icon type imagery. There's also another problem apart from large file sizes with pings on the web. It's that Internet Explorer 6 has no support for full transparency when using them. So let's now investigate um, the two different kinds of PNG or pings you get. So what I've done here is simply exported out the logo for usable efficiency and I've put a drop shadow on it and you can see that if I put on the background again there's a, clearly a drop shadow there. But let's take the, the background off so we can save out as transparency and let's go file save for web and let's go back to png8 so as we can see with the transparency there there is transparency in that image but it's an all or nothing there's no in between it's either one pixel that's completely opaque or it's filled with a color and that's exactly the same as what a gif is there's no in between values in the transparency it is all or nothing so we look at the file size there, we've got the PNG8 and we've got basically 22k. So let's now switch to PNG24 and look what's happened. You can see there that um, there is full opacity. So there's pixels there that have a, an opaque value of whatever in between 0 and 1. So this is what ideally we would want um, if we're looking to export full transparency. But if you look at the file size in the bottom left, PNG24, and it's 38k, so that's significantly larger than a PNG8 image. There are quite a few things you can do to reduce the size of your pings, but there are certainly two that I use daily when exporting them out. Um, I mean, you could spend hours and literally days trying to crunch your PNGs into the lowest possible file size, but you've kind of got to be pragmatic at times. And certainly these are two tips that I've used and I use daily to reduce the size of them. The first is to use the posterize function within Photoshop. The second is to use external PNG crunching software such as PNG Genie. That's the one I use. It's a Mac um, OS X app. Uh, there's certainly other one for Windows and uh, both Windows and Mac OS X. Um, but that's the one I found to work quite efficiently. This episode continues and the full um, details can be found at usable-efficiency.com.